Alright, welcome back to another episode of Sip the Talent Presents. And this time I'm still focused on the 2020 draft prospects. Uh, linebackers to be specific. And today we're coming at you with, uh, I think, the fifth guy in the series. I'm maybe going to do one or two more guys. And today's topic is Troy Dye. Uh, linebacker for Oregon, uh, I think. You know, when I do this, I'm going to gonna kind of compare who I'm currently doing to the guys I've done so far. So, you know, you'll hear me kind of reference earlier guys I've done so far. I'm not going to reference Isaiah Simmons in any of it because he's a freak of nature. But the other guys I've done, uh, Queen, Murray, and um, I think somebody else I did. But right now, mainly Queen and Murray. Them, them two guys I think of off the top of my head. So um, without further ado, let's drop in, jump into this uh, Troy Die film. But before we do that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. And if you really like what you um, see and want to be a part of it when I drop these randomly, hit the uh, bell notifications. All right? And appreciate that. Let's get started. Troy Dye. Uh, 6'4", senior, 226 pounds, currently uh, from the University of Oregon. Um, this first play is going to be kind of like in in the, the not the flats, but in open space. For the most part, he's probably more of a middle linebacker than the two previous guys I talked about, which which being Murray and, and Queen. And I'll get into reasons why I say that also. Now, he's no way as fast or as athletic as those two guys, but he's taller. And with that taller frame, I think he has the ability to play at 250-ish. Right now, he's 226, and that's a skinny, skinny guy, but he's playing tough. He's playing physical, and that's why you know how I feel about the SEC. I picked the SEC team to show you film on. He's playing against Auburn. This guy had 15 tackles this game. 15 versus Auburn. And Auburn being one of the better teams, you know, down the stretch run. And, you know, we kind of, SEC, and I don't know if you guys feel the same way I do, but SEC is a step above every other conference, especially Pac-12. This guy had 15 tackles in this game, 15. And so um, I guess you can kind of see my excitement for what I'm about to show you because, because now there are three guys in the conversation for the first, where well, the second linebacker coming off. Because I think Simmons is the first by far. So now it's going to be, it's three guys. It's Queen, it's Murray, and it's Die. And so let, let's get into it. And again, if you're new to the channel, let's talk about what's going on on the screen. Obviously, this is the prospect's name. This is my Twitter, Coach Evans 9 And these are little notes I have to remind me which clips I put in. And so this first one you see is redirecting. So this is him right here. And what I mean by redirecting is he's not going to let this receiver just do what he wants to do. He's going to get hands on him, which you heard me mention about some of the other guys not getting hands on him, and make him do something he don't want to do, or at least throw the timing off on whatever the route is. Put hands on him, rough him up a little bit. And Bo Nix get out and scramble. Now let's see if he's the primary. I, I didn't pay attention to this earlier. Let's see if Nix look the, looks at 33 and see if he's the primary. He's not the primary. He's straight down the field right here. So this guy I think is the primary. But because he's getting roughed up, basically getting handcuffed, he can't come there because he's in that alley. Look like guys running the comeback. He's in the, the throwing lane. So he got to go somewhere else. So he unintentionally gets in the throwing lane by roughing his guy up within the, the three to five yard space he's allowed to do that. And now they get a scrum out of the quarterback. So it's a good job of redirecting. Putting hands on guys. Ice drops. <laughs> we finally got to a linebacker that I that drops the way I think you should. All right. He got to flip his hips, get his head around, still see the quarterback, and get width and depth in certain instances. This is this is uh die right here. I'm gonna let it run through first. Look at that. Ooh, that look at that. So if anybody here had the wall off, he coming right to him. Ball snap. He's gonna flip them hips, keep his eyes on the quarterback, get depth and width. 
That's the key, getting depth and width and not dropping to open space. Is the receiver going to kind of try to come in here somewhere? He's going to drop to him. Hips flip. There's a receiver right there. You can't really see it on your screen yet, but he coming. There he is coming to your screen. He dropping to him. Because there's nobody over here to, to, to wall off. So that's why all these guys are walling this way. Because nobody's over here. And I think they maybe have man coverage on whoever they got. And he probably got inside leverage. They don't let they don't let this guy to the middle of the field. Under no circumstance. This is this is dive still back here walling. Great drop. The line of scrimmage up here somewhere. That's what I'm talking about by drops. If you go back and look at the Queen and Murray film, you don't see them drop like this. You see them kind of drop straight back and probably don't cover no more than three or four yards left, right, or front to back. They don't cover a lot of depth when they when they drop. And I don't know, maybe they weren't asked to do that, but this is how you're supposed to drop, in my in my opinion. And again, Nick scrambling. There's two players in the row he's scrambling. So Oregon must do a lot of good stuff on defense. All right, sideline to sideline. That's what that SL stand for. That is right. And the pitch is a little grainy. I think this is die right here. We'll see in a minute. Turn and run. Turn and run. Now, again, he's not as fast as, as Murray and, and Queen. But he's he fast enough to get the job done. Jet sweep. He's a step behind the jet sweeper. And this guy's been running for four or five yards. Stays inside out of it. If this trash is not here, he may be a little bit closer. But when the guy turns up, he right now he realizes I can't go straight down the line. So I'm going to veer back and take a little better angle. And so had he came out clean, he'd been right there waiting on him. Just a good job playing from the middle of the field to the sideline. That's sideline to sideline speed. Not as fast as Queen and Murray, but fast enough. I right, find the ball. This is die right here. See how he finds the ball. Go get it. Go get it. Look at that effort. Look at that effort. Guess who catches him down the field? Guess who catches the running back? Let's see where they at. They're on the tennis. This play starts just shot of 50. 35, 40 some odd yards down the field. This guy gonna run down and run it back. If he could have quit and gave up a long time ago. Could have. Oh, I can't catch this guy. He got the angle. Now, like I said, he's fast enough. He's fast enough to get down there. All right, got him at the edge rusher now. Got him right here. He's, yeah, I'll just show you first. Running back tries to block him, no chance. And even though he's unscathed, watch what happens when the running back does get there. He just goes through him. Even though the running back takes a horrible angle, but look how fast he, he puts pressure on the QB. Unscathed, making a beeline to the QB. The running back doesn't have a chance to adjust to him. And look at the angle he's going. He went right off of this guy who's being blocked. So there's no wasted space. There's not a lot of grass between him and him. And the only reason he adjusts the angle is the quarterback has a deep drop and the running back has a terrible angle to block him. That's understanding angle, leverage, and just having a good football like you. And then knowing when the quarterback steps up, he's not really going to be able to get much on him. He's just reaching for the ball. He's slapping for the ball. He missed it. But slapping for the ball. Trying to get it out. Good football IQ. And good... Quickness of thought, for lack of a better word. Maybe able to process information real quick. To change the angle, jump for the ball, realize I can't get this sack. Let me try to knock it out in a matter of that. That's that's high level of, of processing right there. That's high level of processing right, processing right there. All right, let's move on to the next play. Again, scrambling. <laughs> I didn't realize how much uh, Nick was scrambling. But this is his first start too, I think. Shedding blocks. This is what Dai does better than Murray and Queen to me. Blockers get on him, and he gets rid of him. He gets rid of him. And I know people, like somebody, when I was talking about on Twitter today, I mentioned how much I was liking Dai. And they was like, but he only 220 pounds. 
So what? When he goes through when he goes through an NFL process and after the combine, he's gonna bulk up. Cause you know they all slim down to run, you know, high forties. But when the combine's over, he's gonna bulk up. He's gonna put Mads back on. And by the time he's a starter probably next year or the year after that, he'll be two fifty. So you're looking at a six four, two fifty, maybe even more nightmares in the middle of your defense. So him being 220 right now does not bother me one bit. And he's actually 226. Get that man in six pounds. All right? But shedding blocks, I got off my tangent. I got on a tangent a little bit. Shedding blocks is, is what I like. And I, maybe three or four clips in here of him shedding blocks. He in the middle of the situation. 54, get off me. De defensive guys love to let you, love to shoot them hands, which he doing, he doing right there. Throw him by. He ain't throwing by. He just got off of him, though. Can't really throw a lineup by. <laughs> Maybe it's a running back or a DB. But he's still going to shoot them hands. Shoot them hands, press him out. Now, look at it. Dip that head over there. Just like a D-line. Dip that head over there. See the ball. Now go get the ball. I went to a clinic, and the D-line coach was talking about pressing dude out and violently getting that head over here. And that's what you just saw. And I don't even know if you can see that on film. But basically getting them head, that hand out there and violently getting that head over to find the ball while still controlling your guy. And that's, that was perfect right there of him doing it. Uh, again, another clip of drops. Yeah, just drop and take it away. Drop the button number one. If you didn't know where he was, it's him right here on the edge. Gonna flip them hips and get up under number one as a receiver out here that you can't really see. He gonna he gonna rip, first of all he gonna look and see where he at. I talked about that in one of the videos too. Them guys not looking. He gonna look and see where he at and he gonna drop and get width and depth at the same time. And make sure he get up under them and take away the curl. See? Nah, see how he peeked to see where he was. Now he gonna change his angle. Watch his angle change and now he right up under. So if, if they wanted to throw anything to that guy, it had to be over the top, which is, this ball is thrown to him because you couldn't have the curl because of his drops. Watch how he flip his hips and get out of there. That's textbook. That's textbook. Again with the drops. He's right here. Right at number 35. Now he didn't have to turn his hips on that because he in the boundary. But he got depth and width while paying attention to his surroundings. Watch how his head's on the swivel, making sure he guards or guards whoever comes in his zone. All right, so now his eyes on this guy. He's leaving. Something else coming. He found it. Found what's coming. Eyes back on the quarterback to see if the ball coming. That's this guy right here, right up under the purple right here. That's that's who he peeked at and saw him coming. Got right up under him. And now, with, with him going to another zone, if he throw this ball to him, he just come up and make the tackle. Which is what was done. And he's right here in position to make the tackle if guy, you know, catches it and whatnot. He's not covering grass when he dropped. Back to shedding blocks. See in the middle of your field number 35. On it. Get off. Just a slight little push to find the ball. I'm going to climb. Okay, I'm going to extend my arms so you can't get close enough to me. And keep in mind them 6'4 arms. So he pro his arms probably just as long as that lineman, if not longer. You can't get up on me because I got long arms to fight you off. And I'm going to go make this tackle. I really like this kid, man. I really do. Shedding blocks again. Middle, middle of the lineup. 54 trying to get on him. Keep him off. Make the tackle. Same thing. Shedding blocks. He just don't stay blocked. He don't stay blocked. Get them arms extended. And he still got leverage. He got the good leverage because he got this arm free if he wanted to be. That's his gap right there. And he got it. This dude out his gap. We talk about gap integrity all the time. This dude's supposed to be over here. But he got it right there. So they, basically they got two people in one gap when they shouldn't have. He should be over there. But we talking about Die. Die got the leverage right here on this guy. I ain't going to get off of it. Make that top. That's simple. See, it may be skip one. Say an edge, that's not what we had. Shading blocks, maybe there's still the one. That's what happened when you, you got fat fingers. You kind of mess up a little bit. But yeah, that's that was the shading the block. So the next play. Setting the edge. 
It's him right here. Now, setting the edge, this is not a positive one. So don't don't think he, he got hooked. This this is one of the few negatives I saw. He has to, and this is that right here. If he's the, the, the alley or edge defender, he's spilling it. This guy is spilling this this pool. So he has to be on the outside of this guy to take to make the tackle. With him spilling, which means he's giving up the inside, then he come and get hooked. That's a, a huge lane for this running back to run. So when he spills, he got to be outside of it to take it. That's why he's spilling. He's trying to spill it to this guy. But the fact that he spilled it and he got hooked sucks for the defensive coordinator. Look at all that room he got to run. That huge game. What should happen, again, let's go back to, to the point. This guy spilled it. Spilling it means I'm I'm turning it over so you can go make the tackle. But with that being said, his butt need to be out here. His butt need to be out here. So I'm spilling it to you. So if he comes out here and die is where he's supposed to be, he now has to stop and cut it back. And when he cuts it back, 41 can come over. This dude can retrace. 8 can come and make the tackle. Or 16 can even run the alley. But by him letting him get outside and all his grass, it's a 30-40-yard 40 yard game. 5, 10, 15, about a 20-yard game. Again, yeah, that's the that's one that's the the one negative I saw in this game. Not to say he don't he 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 played a bunch of good games, even with a cast on. He I saw him make an interception with you know watching his highlights with a cast on. So that's great athleticism right there. Especially at 6'4. That's another negative I got. Don't run the middle. And not don't run up the middle of a guy when you blitz. Watch he's gonna run right down the middle of I think 54 to 7. 54 or 64. Instead of giving him a shoulder and keeping his leverage, he's going to run right down the middle of the field. The old line is going to basically grab him and just, he got it. I think it's going to be 64. No, it's 54. He just ran right down the middle. So he got blocked up. Ran right down the middle. So let's see which, which gap he got. So obviously he has this gap. So he needs to take this shoulder. And running through the O-line shoulder right here. His right shoulder should go rip right through the O-lineman's right shoulder also. So that way, even if the O-lineman kind of blocks him, he still has his gap leverage. He still has his leverage just in case it's a run. So if this has been some kind of draw or something, and these guys fanned out or whatever they did, he ran right down the middle of this lineman, and now he's blocked. He's not helping the defense. He don't even really have a gap right here. So what the quarterback take off running? Right there. I mean, he might can get off. But he don't have a gap. He don't have his gap controlled. This dude over here getting washed. But we, we focusing on that. And they got an exception anyway. So <laughs> so what? They got, I didn't even realize that. Effort. Effort, 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 effort. This is our guy right here. Watch the effort. Oh, I thought his leg was broke. Got up. Got back in on the tackle. Uh, I thought he was hurt on that one when I first watched it. 76 got good on, got a little pin and pancake. Get right back up off that pancake. Go down. So this is the this is what happens when you don't allow Lyman to put syrup on you as a pancake. You get back up and go make the tackle. So at this point right here, he ready for Angel Mama or whatever your your syrup of choice is. But he was like, nah, you ain't putting that on me today. Get back up, I'm gonna go back, get back into play. Your pancakes got to be dry today, buddy. All right, now blitzing. Here's him in the middle of the field. Middle of the formation, I mean. Did a good job. He didn't make the tackle. I just like how he got skinny going through there. I like how he got skinny. Turn his back to him. So if the lineman push you in the back, you won. He got his back turned to him, and he, and he fit right between this guy and this guy. They run an outside zone. He fit right between. So he has gap integrity. And he getting through that to potentially go make the tackle. He just gets he gets tripped up. It's a good job of fitting through there and getting skinny. And missed tackles. Missed tackles right here. I don't even remember what I put in here for this play. Oh yeah. Just out of place. Just out of place. Out of place, flat footed, and was able to be juked. Right? Attack. Attack that guy. Don't wait on him. Just let him, you know, get behind. That's a good job by the running back, too. I can't put, I can't really put this on him. The running back saw him in the hole, made a little quick, little sidestep to get back behind the lineman. That's good vision by the running back. 
I'm not. That's not a negative right there. That's that's me being being petty. That's me being petty. That's that's good vision by the running back. But he still got in on the tackle. Still got in on the tackle. Now um, this is man, that was fast. It's 15 plays with Troy Die, and again he's a linebacker from the University of Oregon, and um, 6'4", 226 right now. I guarantee you, by the time he's an impact player on somebody's team in the NFL, he'll be pushing 250. And once the combine's over with and he runs a 4-5, he's going to go back to bulking up and give you what you need. And he may bulk up between now and the combine just to push out a bunch of bench reps. Never know. And he might be with a trainer that can add weight to him while dropping his times. Because some of those guys are some of those guys out there. So, you know, with him being 226, playing in college, you can't really put that on the kid. Yeah, the kid at LSU, you know, is bulkier. Yeah, the kid at Oklahoma is bulkier. But I think this guy shows more inside linebacker skills than, than they do. Especially getting off blocks like that. The ability to to to, to press those those linemen out with them long, long arms and then go chase the tackle down. I like that a lot better than just being fast. I do. I, I I'm starting to think Murray and um and Queen are, are weak linebackers. And I call them weak, like weak side linebackers or or just straight up outside linebackers in some instance. They have middle linebacker tendencies, but they so, so fast that I can see a lot of defensive coaches, I mean offensive coaches, scheming against that speed. This dude is patient. He don't mind taking on blockers. He ain't just trying to dance around them. He, and he knows how to get off of them. He knows how to shed, which is, is, is a good quality to have coming out of college. And, um, and I appreciate you guys for coming through here. Again, it's Troy Dye, University of Oregon linebacker. I'm Coach Evans. Uh, hit the like button. Comment down below if you agree with me about uh, Dye and, and reference to Queen and Murray. Um, I think I got one or two more guys I'm going to do in the linebacker series. Then I'm going to switch over. So, um, uh, I guess I'm out, man. Peace. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to patreon.com backslash zip the tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans and again thanks everyone for the support and head on over to patreon.com backslash zip to tally. <laughs>